Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Smith. Okay, we're looking at money tasks, and rather we should call it coin problems or denominated values, word problems. So these word problems, or the method I'm gonna use, can be used on any problem that has items with different denominations, and there are mi multiple amounts of different uh, categories of something that's being sold or something that someone has for example a stamp collection you might have a five cent a ten cent and a two cent stamp and you have different amounts of each kind and what's the value what's the total value you know there are tickets sales for a play they might have the children's tickets senior citizens get a special rate you know regular adult tickets Anyway, so that's what I mean by different denominations. And of course, money, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars. We can add up the money. We can add up the stamps and get a value, total value. We can add up the tickets and get a total value. So the method that we're going to look at now can be used with anything to that effect, okay? So anyway, so we just want to be really careful to, um, when we summarize especially, to distinguish between um, the value of your items and the quantity. You definitely need to use your good labeling, okay? So we're gonna try to use a little table to keep us a little organized, okay? So um, let's look at this problem. Here's an example. So uh, Lisa has $4.85 in quarters, dimes, and nickels. She has five fewer quarters than nickels and 10 more dimes than quarters. How many coins of each kind does Lisa have? So, okay, we want to know how many coins of each kind. So, what we want to do is take that second sentence phrase by phrase, okay? We know that we're going to be dealing with the total amount, but we can come back to that $4.85 in a minute, okay? So, let's first just look at five fewer quarters than nickels. So, by the way, let me go ahead and say this really quickly. When we're doing this, let me underline five fewer quarters than nickels, okay? What we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to represent, we're gonna get a statement for all, a little, a little representation of each denomination, but in the end, before we put it into an equation, we wanna have everything in terms of one of the variables. Okay, so, um, and it usually is useful to have everything in terms of the smallest amount of coins or whatever we're dealing with. So let's take a look. Okay, five fewer quarters than nickels. Now look, let's do this. Let's say five fewer, let's put, let me find my pen. Okay, four or five, and let's just say whatever. Maybe there's three more, for example. And uh, let's see. Okay, so there's five missing here, right? Get rid of that, all right. So there's five missing. So we want to say, if there are five less quarters, five less quarters, here you go, nickels here. So how can I represent this, okay? What can I say? Okay, so we can say that N is going to be what? N minus five could be quarters, right? five fewer quarters than nickels. So we could say, to set them equal to one another, we can do this. We can say that their quarters would equal n, right, the number in n of n coins minus five. So this would represent an equation, some way for me to get everything in terms of quarters, so to speak, or, or nickels. Now I could manipulate this little equation to be n equals, or I could manipulate it to be q equals in the end. If I solve this little equation for n, right, add five, I would have n could be q plus five. See, these are two equivalent little statements here, okay? 10 more dimes than quarters. 10 more dimes than quarters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll just put a few more, okay? And one, two, three, there's your quarters. There's 10 more dimes. <clears throat> so in order for me to set these two equal, right? 
to for Q to reach the bar on that. I really would need in to say what I would need ten more on Q, right? Okay, so I would have to say to so say dimes is equal to Q plus ten more would set it equal would would balance the scale. So what you're doing here with these phrases. And in any of these problems, when you're taking phrase by phrase, is you're trying to balance the scale in order to get your representations of your variable. Okay? So now you say dimes is quarters plus ten. And if you needed to set it, if you needed quarters, you wanted the other way, you could say that quarters would be what? Dimes minus ten. Since we have less quarters than the nickels and dimes, let's go ahead and put everything in terms of quarters. In other words, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say nickels, okay, you come here into my table for quantity, right, or what, number of coins, okay, so where did you have something that said n equal, n is equal over here to q plus 5, right, here, let's take that one and put it in for n, so in other words, we want to have the right side of these smaller equations, these little quantities, we want the right side to have something with quarters, right? Okay, so let's write our quarters plus 5. Okay, and then so for dimes, we'll put D is Q plus 10. Okay, and then well, how do we represent quarters if we did all that? Well, quarters is just Q. That's actually what we'll be solving for, so it's just Q. Okay? You could put Q is just equal to Q if you want to. All right, so we'll leave that there. And of course, the value of each denomination. Okay, so for nickels, instead of writing five cents, we're not going to write that. We're going to write what? Dollars, right? 0 0.05. That's what we'll use. For dimes, we'll have 0 0.10, right? And for quarters, 0 0.25. All right. We're almost there, you guys. We're doing real good. Okay, so the total amount, right? The total amount they told me was $4.85. Okay, so this was the total money. Okay, all right. So now we're going to set it up into an equation. All right, so let's keep in mind that Okay, we have three different denominations. So here's kind of a little formula we can use. Rate 1 times amount 1 plus rate 2 times amount 2 plus rate 3 times amount 3. Um, number of coins would be the amount. And then our total. Okay, so let's go for it. The rate would be the value and then of course amount would be the number of coins. So let's put our representation, representation for the value of the nickels. So the 0.05 okay, times the amount of nickels, which would be Q plus 5, plus the dimes value times the amount of dimes, which is Q plus 10. All right, and then we can write just plus, what, 0.25 for quarters, times Q quarters is equal to $4.85. Okay, so this is the equation we'll solve, okay? Well, we can kind of make a choice here. We can go ahead and distribute 100 into both sides to clear up the decimal if you want to do that. If you don't, you don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and do that this time because there's another video earlier that I did not do that. It worked out for you, I showed you it works out both ways. If I multiply 100 times both sides, what's going to happen is the decimal in front of the parentheses here, this guy, right, this guy, this guy, and this guy, the decimals will move to the right twice, okay? So let's see, I'm distributing 100 into the left side of the equation and into the right side okay so there's a little note for y'all and this is what's going to happen we're going to have what five times q plus five plus ten 
and q plus 10 c notice inside the parentheses does not change because it's multiplied times the first number okay so that's kind of convenient for us you don't want to you want to do this before you would distribute so this is 25q is equal to 485. okay see no decimals it makes it a little neater for you let's go ahead and distribute and then combine like terms right okay after you distribute we should have 5q plus 25 plus 10q plus 100 plus that 25q equal to 485. Now we'll combine like terms, okay? So we have a 5q and 10q, that's 15, plus a 25, that makes 40qs. Okay, then we have 100 plus 25, so 125 is equal to 485. Okay? So now we're going to start isolating Q. We're trying to get Q by itself. We're solving for Q. Remember, when you write your equation, you want to have one unknown variable. So that's why above in the table, we put everything with a Q. The, the statement part with the Q is on the right. So we, every, in other words, everything is in terms of Q. So anyway, let's subtract 25 from both sides. And you'll have 40Q is equal to 360. Next, we'll divide both sides by 40, and then we should be okay. We should be done with the solving of our equation. So let's see what happens here. Notice both of these numbers, oh, well, let's go ahead and cancel these out. Okay, now these guys both end in a zero. I can just go ahead and get rid of those zeros, cancel each other. So 36 divided by four would be nine. So I have nine quarters, right? Or I should say Lisa. In the problem, the original problem just has nine quarters. Okay, now let's go back and answer the rest of the questions. Okay, quarters. All right, let's go back up top. All right, and we'll say, okay, Lisa has fourteen nickels based on our based on our representation of that for dimes. She has Q plus ten, so that would be what nine plus ten. So she has 19 dimes. Okay, and then finally she still has the nine quarters. All right, and we're done. All right, you guys, that's an example of coin tasks, okay? And I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Talk to you soon.